I think it all started at high school. Uh, I was strong, I think, I was strongest in maths at high school. And um, to become an engineer, I did well in Poland, you have to be good at math and you have to take um, entry exam to the University of Technology. So that's what I did. I always enjoyed the science subjects at school. I had a particular passion and aptitude for physics. Um, and particularly the mechanics modules and the materials modules because they all had real life applications and applied mathematics. This is something that drove me towards civil engineering in particular because it comprised all of these aspects of physics that I always enjoyed at school. I have known I wanted a career in the built environment for a long time. Um, my dad was, an engine, was a structural engineer and so growing up I was always made aware of buildings and structures around us, especially in London. I didn't specifically choose a career in engineering, but I do clearly remember sitting in the lecture theatre as part of my uh, undergraduate geography degree, listening to the lecturer talk about environmental impact assessment. And it was, it was at that moment that I realised that I wanted to work in the environmental field and contribute towards sustainable development. Well, I've always been uh, interested in the built and na the natural world and how they interact with, with one another. So I suppose it's always been a natural um, assumption that I would come get into the, the built environment and engineering worlds. Um, I used to go on site with my dad who was an architect. He often made me hold the staff while he looked for a theodolite and got me in, stand in some random locations so that was quite fun. So I work in transport planning. Um, I've always been very nosy about the way people travel to where they want to get to um, and I'm also really interested in sustainable and active travel so I cycle and walk and I want to promote cycling and walking and using public transport to people um, because I think that's really important for a number of reasons for the environment, for our health, for money and just because it's a good thing to do. What I enjoy most in my day-to-day -day job is carrying out small-scale engineering tasks that I can have ownership of and some responsibility in. I've enjoyed doing column load takedowns and beam design and similar things to that um, just because it gives me an opportunity to really get into the job and show what I can do. Um, I enjoy learning from all the people around me and Waterman have a really good mentoring scheming process which allows for me to be helped by other people. Um, the biggest challenge is when you're left to trust your own judgement and sometimes that happens because your manager's not around or because you are just expected to be at that level of understanding at that point and it's really trusting your own judgement and just going for it and making the decisions. Uh, people who are not within the industry, uh, they don't know what public health engineering is so I just say, oh I design water and drainage uh, services in, in buildings. So that, that's how I simplify it. But then within the industry, I think it's worth mentioning that some of my colleagues, colleagues think that public health services are easier than mechanical or electrical engineering. And I think they're not. I think they're wrong. In terms of misconceptions about my job, I think when a lot of people think about the environment, they think only of ecology. But as an environmental impact assessment consultant, I will be liaising with many other specialists. And noise, contaminated land, flood risk, landscape architecture, um, heritage, not just the ecologists. What I find most interesting about my, my, my particular role as a um, in the industry is the opportunity to work with so many different people, so many different people with excellent technical disciplines. So like I said, I can work with one minute talking about piling um, and uh, archaeological potential of a site. And then I can talk about flood risk with a flood risk engineer. I can be discussing wind microclimate with the engineers, but also the architects to influence design. When starting out my career in the environment, I didn't expect to learn quite so much about engineering as I have done. I've undertaken site visits to water supply works, water treatment works, airports, railways, roads, steelworks. And so I feel really fortunate to be able to have learnt how the infrastructure around us works. Oh, there's a few, but I think a highlight of my career was working for um, Sostrans. So I ran a project in Nottingham, um, getting students and staff at three big uh, organisations, a hospital and two universities and three colleges um, to cycle more. So doing everything from riding them with bikes, taking them out on bike rides, talking to the Pro Vice Chancellor about getting more infrastructure friendly for, for cycling and really influencing the city about how we we're going to take cycling forward. But there's been a lot of different projects, big and small, and they're, they're all you know, really interesting. So I have been a STEM ambassador since I left school. Um, 
most of my work has been in primary schools. Um, I go into schools in South East London and talk to the children about just the concept of becoming an engineer or working in the built environment. A lot of them think that engineers are plumbers or electricians, people that come and fix things in their house. So just introducing them to the idea that there is a profession beyond school where they can get involved in things like buildings um, is quite inspiring for them.